During senior year of high school, a boy that I grew up with was shot at a local shopping mall. The next day at school, a girl I had never spoken to approached me, concern in her brow, asking sweetly, how's your friend? I was moved by her empathy. An exotic bird in a beige land of suburban track houses, I answered. He's still in critical condition, but we're all praying. My grandmother is down at the hospital now. She, head bobbing hair flip, smile shifting into quiet knife replied, well, I still say if he was a gang member, he deserved to get shot. This poem is for Michelle Albright and what we deserve. You deserved both of my hands around your throat that day and the shaking I gave you. You probably still live in some suburb somewhere in a house just like the one you grew up in. You are probably married to an insurance agent who played high school ball and still reminisces when he drinks too much on the weekends. You are probably a banker, one of those predatory mortgage lenders that gets rich by manipulating poor people. You probably have two kids who look exactly like you. You probably think that they deserve the best. Michelle, you never knew Cedric. You never saw the bruises he or his sister wore to Sunday school. Never tried not to fall asleep at the all-night prayer sessions the adults and our families held in hopes of protecting them from their stepfather. Never prayed for him to get saved. You never curled inside the kindness of their mother. Never grew roots in the forest of her song. You did not come to our reunions or revivals, never heard the desperation in our melody. You have never been unable to afford the arrogance of your godlessness, Michelle. You never saw Cedric smile. You never wept or prayed for him. You never tried to beat him in a foot race. You never knew why his manhood was so urgent or why it cost him so much blood to achieve, Michelle. I want you to know that he did survive and that when he recovered, he reclaimed his manhood the only way he knew how, that he was 17 when they locked him away for good and that the last time I saw him was at his mother's funeral. We were 18 then. They did not unshackle his hands nor his feet as he rattled to the pulpit to read a poem he had written for his dead mother and all I could think about was you and what you said he deserved, Michelle. I still see his aunties and uncles and cousins sometimes. He is his family's phantom limb, but I know better than to stare or talk about it. My family has missing teeth of its own, Michelle. I'm a mother now, and every night when I listen at my daughter's door, I can tell through the door the difference between asleep breathing, awake breathing, and awake pretending to be asleep breathing. <laughs> I have kissed her head and toes, cleaned her messes, read her books, wrote her lullabies, taught her to ride a bicycle and to swim, helped with homework, talked down teachers, spoken to the mothers of bullies, spoken to bullies, prayed and prayed and prayed. Michelle, I taught her to read. I taught her to speak, to speak up even to me. I have washed and matched her socks over and over again, have had to send her out into a world that does not value her life, that would tell her something about inferiority and it belongs belonging to her, about her body and identity and it belonging to them that pretends that black lives are not as carefully cultivated as white lives as if she is not the most loved child that has ever lived, Michelle. I wonder what you think she deserves, Michelle. I know Cedric's mother felt the same way about her son that I do about my daughter, Michelle. What do you teach your babies, Michelle? Do you know what a victim is? Do you think they always look like you, Michelle? Have you ever felt like a statistic, Michelle? Do you know the smack of a gavel can crack a spirit in half, Michelle? Do you have a spirit, Michelle? We all deserve better than this. Even you. Thank you.